What's going on guys, Micah here. Uh, this course is gonna be on JavaScript fundamentals. So we're gonna dive straight into uh, building variables, writing functions, explaining how JavaScript works and some of the ways that you can use it. I'm gonna give an example uh, for each of those and we're gonna have a really small project that you can make at the end of it. This is gonna be a super duper simple course but I think it'll be really informative for you guys and it'll help you get at least the building blocks of JavaScript so that that way when you're moving on to other parts of JavaScript like frameworks and advanced levels of development that you're gonna know the basics and you're gonna have that uh, under your belt there for sure. So anyhow, I hope you like the course. Thanks for being here and I'll see you in the video series. All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get set up inside of CodePen.io is which is where we are going to be writing JavaScript. Um, you can also use HTML there. We're not going to dive too hard into that. Um, but this is a nice little area to write code without having to set up anything too crazy on your desktop. You can just go to codepen.io, make an account, and then go ahead and start a new pen, right? Which should be one of the first options you see. You're going to start the new pen, and you're going to come to here. Then what you're going to want to do is just move your um, your screen out to where you have uh, this section right here is where the code actually displays, right? Anything that's visual right here. And then over on the left hand side, you're going to want to click the box for console because we will be using that quite a bit. Um, other than that, make the JavaScript box big. You can slide the CSS box down. Right, because we're going to be writing some JavaScript in here, and then we're going to be viewing what the results are in the console, and then ultimately displaying them in an actual uh, web document, an HTML document right here. So uh, go ahead and get that set up. Get this basic HTML set up right here. It's just a HTML body with a script tag in it, and you're good to go. So that's all you need to do to set up. So go ahead and do that, and you'll be ready for the next video in this series. Hey guys, in this video we're gonna break right into JavaScript data types and declaring variables. So what a variable is, is it's basically assigning a piece of data to something else that you can call up, right? So when you think of what data is, that could be numbers, that could be a word, right? That could be a variety of things right so I'm gonna give you some demos of this so the whole basic uh, pretense of this course is that we're gonna be working with a like a car dealership so I'm gonna make a variable called car brand right and car brand is going to be equal to and we're just gonna give it a string right which is defined in quotes and we're just gonna give it Honda right right so I have that here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the console section and I'm going to console log um, car brand, right? And then see it says Honda now. So this spits out what my actual car brand variable is, which is a string that has the string of Honda in it, okay? So we can do this with... Um, Bunch of other stuff. Let's make another variable. So um, we're going to take a variable of um, Honda quantity, all right? And then we're going to take the quantity of Hondas that we have is 40. Let's say we have 40 in stock, right? Um, as these errors pop up right here, don't worry about that. That's just catching those because it auto saves over time. So you just feel free to clear the console continuously. Um, so I'm going to want to get the, I'm going to console log. Um, Honda quantity, right? And you can see that that is 40, right? So you can see how variables are a useful way that we can store data and then we can call them later, right? So variables are not limited to just um, single um, like static things. So if I wanted to have a whole list of car brands, I could do that too. If I wanted to have my variable be almost anything that we can make in JavaScript we can store inside of a variable and then we can call it out later, right? Um, and then also, just a context thing, when we are console logging this, 
stuff. It's just to kind of check our own work. Console log just kind of spits out whatever we've made in this JavaScript file to us so that we can see that the value is correct. It's kind of like a testing or debugging feature, but as you can see over here in our actual visible web uh, document right here, we're not seeing anything yet, but we will get there. So um, that these, these are some of the uh, basics of, of variables right here. I'm gonna give you another one. Um, so just a really basic thing I could say, variable uh, employee um, first name equals John, right? And then by console log employee first name. No, give me John, right? So this is a basic intro to what you're going to be working with with variables. So really easy to understand pretty much. You just go ahead and you put in var and then you name it whatever you want to name it. Right? Your variable can literally be like this could be named peanut butter and it could equal Honda. Right? When you're writing this stuff out, it just needs to make sense to you so that you can use it later inside of your code. Anyhow, stick around for the next video. All right, in this video, we're going to go over actually putting variables into other variables and adding variables. So what we're going to go ahead and do right now, you can see I've added a couple different types just to demonstrate what types there are. You'll be able to go to this code pen and check us out. I'll drop a link to it and you'll be able to see all of these types and all of these exercises here. So we have a variable we want to know for our car dealership, right? We want to know a variable is total quantity uh, of cars, right? So we just want to know like our total inventory, right? And so we're going to say that this equals um, two other variables added to each other, right? So we can say we only have two brands, right? So we have the Honda quantity plus the Toyota quantity equals the total quantity of cars, right? So we have the Hondas, we have 40 Hondas and we have 20 Toyotas, right? So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna console, I'm gonna console log out the total quantity of cars, right? So there you see how we can make a lot of use of this, right? So if we wanna have all these different quantities we can actually add together all the brands quantities into one variable and all we have to do is call that right so we can use this variable later inside of our project to display the total quantity of cars which could be an important data point for our car dealership which we are making a web app or a website for okay so uh, moving on from that another thing that we can do is we can actually um, kind of combine these things to make them a little bit easier to understand. So one of the things that I'm going to bump into is objects, right? So let's say we have a car brand of Honda and then we have a quantity of Hondas, which is 40, right? So maybe what we want to do is actually make some of these variables kind of work together and we kind of organize the data there so that way we don't go through here and just have a bajillion um, variables that are all displayed um, outside of themselves and you know it could be kind of messy if we continue to do it in this um, in this manner so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we're gonna actually make a uh, a variable which will equal um, an object right for Hondas right so we're gonna take this and it's gonna be um, um, brand Honda so just to back up a little bit an object is started kind of like an array is um, we haven't talked too much about this but it's just uh, has brackets that hold multiple things separated by commas right so these could be numbers right um, same type of situation here inside of the object, right? So we defined our brand is Honda, Honda, and then we're gonna actually, I'm gonna build this out kind of more like we would an actual code editor there. 
it's always good to stay organized. So we're gonna have brand Honda, we're gonna throw a comma after that. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say um, uh, models. Or I'm gonna say Honda models, right? And that's gonna actually equal an array. So we can actually put an array inside this object. So I'm gonna take um, the opportunity to go ahead and put in a chord and civic, right? So we have those in there, right? And then we're gonna go on and we're gonna say um, quantity. Quantity of Hondas, right? And so we know that that is 40, but quantity Hondas and Honda quantity are actually gonna be separate things. Don't get confused with that. Um, then what we're gonna do is we're actually going to say um, actually let's just let's just stay with that that's good right so now we have um, three separate things inside this object and now I know the kind of the general thing is like well what if I want to do this for Toyota's well great well then what we would do is we would go ahead and we will put this whole thing inside of a separate array right and so then we would make it an array of objects, right? So I just put those flat brackets there. And then we got curly brackets for our objects. And then I'll bump right into doing one for, for Toyota, right? So we're actually gonna model the data structure like exactly the same, but we might have um, different, different setup here. So let's go ahead and say, Toyota models and quantity Toyotas. And we'll say uh, Tacoma and Camry. So just to organize this all out, here we go. There. We go. Cool. So I'm going to clear all this out. Um, variable, and so I'm just going to say um, model model data, right? So this is an array. So if we want to call these things, we have to call model data, but then we have to call which like item inside of here. So the way that we call out arrays is like this. So if I take um, uh, console log model data right I print out then it gives me all of the objects but let's say that I only want one of them right so there's an order so you would think that the order of uh, so there's two things in here so the order of, you would think will be one two but JavaScript actually starts from zero so it'll be zero one and then if there was another object that would be two right and then there's subsections of, like under each of those objects, right? So you start out with, um, this would be one, and then, or this would be zero, right? And then z the brand would be the first item inside of the first item of the model data array. So I'll show exactly what I mean here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get, uh, model data but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the first thing in there because I just want to see all the Honda data and that is the first thing so zero right and so see we just got the Honda actually you know what I forgot to change this Toyota right, there we go let's see we got Accord Civic and there's 40 I'm gonna change this one to say 20 Right, so let's say that I want the Honda stuff, but I just want to see the models. So what I'll do is we'll go ahead and I'll console log out um, model data, right? And then I'm going to get the first thing in it, and then I'm going to put a dot, and then I'm going to say Honda models, right? And let's see what we get. There we go. We got 
all the Honda models. We got that whole array and we could have literally had like all of the Honda models ever inside of that. So this is a kind of neat way to show how you would, you would call out the data. If you needed to call it out uh, of your variable, you would call it out like that. So we did get into uh, a pretty, pretty deep section of calling out um, arrays and objects here. Uh, but in the next video, we're going to get into some more stuff to kind of show you more ways that we can manipulate uh, data in JavaScript and actually get it out. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. What's going on, everyone? Today, we're going to do a pretty simple lesson on accessing data inside of JavaScript objects. So a JavaScript object um, is just something that we can use to hold data. And I'm going to write one out right now. We're going to make this object represent um, some data about a person, and this person is going to be Tom Hanks. So, um, with some of the facts are going to be skewed on this one, but it'll be kind of fun. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go and start out. We're going to do um, let person object, and just put this in the back of your mind not really a big deal, but we could also do var person object, or we could also do const person object, right? For this doesn't really matter. But for the time being, I'm going to do let. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and throw brackets around my data. And so here we go. We now have the frame for a JavaScript object to start being built. So what we're going to do is we're going to give we're gonna put some key value pairs in there, which basically just means we're gonna write something like this. So um, first name is gonna be equal to a string, which is gonna be Tom, right? And that's gonna be our first key value pair. So we're literally just gonna say, we have an object and inside that object, one of the attributes in there, a key value pairs is first name. So if we wanna get Tom's first name, we'll just call for Tom's first name, right? Or we'll call for the person object first name right so we're going to give some more uh, stuff in here uh, last name equals Hanks right and you see that because they're strings I'm putting them in quotes right and we're gonna see how it's gonna change here in just a second with the data type I'm gonna say uh, how old is Tom Hanks 61 right maybe we'll just say that probably younger than that but we'll just assume for this purpose that that is maybe what his age is so we're going to say 61 right and because it's a number no quotes right because that is how we format the data type inside of javascript right then moving on um to that we're going to say is tom hanks hungry 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 is he hungry yes and we put a boolean in there so is he hungry he true yes he is and yeah i don't know why i did that semicolon that was just an accident but it is comma after that and see a boolean value of true or false can be represented just like that because it's a boolean um it's not a string it's not a number but it doesn't need quotes right now if i put quotes around it then it would make it a string of true but we want a boolean for this purpose so there we go and booleans are good for like binary things like is he hungry or is he not um either one or the other right kind of something like that um then what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a separate object within this object which is kind of crazy so we're going to set up just the way that we did before except for this point in time you're I know you might be thinking like, hey, why didn't we do, why didn't we say let and then the object's name or whatever? Well, we don't have to do that here. We just specified that we are making an object and it is a key value pair inside of our object. So it's like a sub object, basically, is the sort of concept you want to think around. So for this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to give him... 126 Cherry Lane, which is, I have no idea if that's actually a place. Um, and the city be New York. And you see, I have a syntax error right there because I hit a period and not a comma. So I'm going to throw that in there. And the city will be New York. And then we'll go ahead and do the state, which will also be New York. 
And see, this is like a, a data structure, right? So if you're building out a dummy data structure to play with, this is how you do it. Yeah, you would just do this. And then you probably like cut and paste this down, all this stuff, and, and then change the items in it for a dummy data structure. But this just represents like data that you would actually have that you could be using in an application right here. Because most of the time, it's going to come in as this, right? It's going to come in as JavaScript objects. So it's very important to uh, like understand like sort of the format of what you're what you're getting here. So let's do this zip. Would you give me a number that I just made up? Right. So that's that. Right. But then we're gonna have an additional. Um, we're gonna have an additional thing here. We're gonna put in an array and we're gonna do that. Um, his hobbies. Right. And his hobbies are going to be golf. Getting the coronavirus. Because apparently Tom Hanks was the coronavirus right now. And acting. Right? So, since that is the last item in our object, we do not have to worry about putting a uh, comma around it. And now we can start doing some stuff with it. So over here in the console, if I want to um, pull this up, right? So after changing just a little syntax error that I had, I needed to put equals right before my array. And there we go, we're good to go. Now I can just go ahead and call person object, right? And there it is. And so now we see the full object and we see the address, age, first name, hobbies, is he hungry, and the last name, right? So anyhow, now that we have all that, we can begin to access just like specific properties of it. So if I wanted to get just a specific um, property, let's just say I want to get the last name. What I can do is come in here and be like person object dot first name. Right, so that got me the first name, and I can do that with any of these. So now I bet you're probably saying like, well, how do I get the object inside of this object's content? So how do I get inside of person object? How do I get the address and city and state? Like how do I get all those items? So what we would do for that is it's kind of like it just trails down. It's just sort of with dots, you can just begin to continually reference down. So person object address, right? And then what's the sub item of that? Well, we'll go ahead and we'll get the city. And then we can see we got New York, right? So it things just kind of step down like that, right? So we can do this with dot notation, or we can also do what's called bracket notation, which is basically the same it's we're doing the same thing it's just a different um, format for accessing it which can kind of help us with when, when you're writing code you you can find uses for it when you're trying to pass like more like dynamic uh, things in there so let's see we do person object address right and then we do brackets single quotes and then we're gonna put in the name of what we're trying to access and there we go we got New York too right so this is just to show that there's multiple different ways to format it and those have uses. But uh, moving on forward, if we want to access one of his hobbies, right, we're going to want to go ahead, um, person object that hobbies. And you would think that, you know, maybe we might just do something like this, like dot golf or brackets golf, but that's actually not the case. So if we're accessing items inside of an array, inside of an object, we're just accessing items inside of an array. We need to bracket and then reference the um, index or the numerical order of these. So the, the index starts at zero. So this would be zero, one, and two. So if I want golf, then I would go ahead and do that. And there you go, I get golf, right? So that's awesome. So let's actually see if we can go ahead and give this object a new key value pair. 
like if I wanted to add something additional to this, then let's see what we we have to actually write to make that happen. So it's it's really actually pretty easy. So if you access something that is not there in the or in the object already, like if I had said school, right? Now we see in our object we don't have a school in here, but what it does if we put an equal sign is that it will add it to the object. So what we can do right here is we can say person object dot school equals and we can just say Harvard. I don't really know if he went there, but we'll say he did. Right? Cool. So if I do um, now if I just call the whole object, we can see that we have actually added a school of Harvard to this object. So that's pretty cool, right? So um, this allows us to kind of see like how you can add things to objects like new attributes as they come up and then also access any attributes inside of an object and whatever the data is, right? So pretty solid. So let's go ahead and let's take it far further. So let's actually um, take the school thing and, and maybe we want the school to have more details about when he went. So we're going to say person object, right, dot school. And then we're actually going to say this equals an object. And we're going to go in here and we're going to actually make like the name of the school, right? And then we're going to, and well, you know, quotes, you know, add that attribute and then a colon, right? And we're going to say Harvard, right? Then we're going to comma that. We're going to add another attribute in here. So we're going to be like year. What year did he graduate, right? And we'll just say that that is like 1987. I don't know if that's when he got there, but that's it. Actually, 1987, not a string. So it just goes in there straight, right? So we're going to go ahead, close that off, throw that in. See, it added it to the object. Let's check our person object real quick. And there we go. So now we have a school object that has a name of Harvard in the year of 1987. Pretty cool, right? So let's say that we actually don't need to know his hobbies or if he's hungry anymore. And let's say that those things are not something that we need to worry about anymore. Well, what we can do, I mean, we want to delete them. So that's literally what we put delete and then what we want to delete. So person object dot hobbies. And then I'm going to do what's called a ternary operator. And I'm just going to put two and signs or two ampersands, right? And I'm going to add on an additional command that says delete person object dot is hungry, right? So I'm just gonna bang that out. It did it. It's a, it's true. That's just what the console's telling us right there. And then I'm gonna pull up this person object, and I'm gonna see if those things are in there. And they're not in there anymore, right? Now they may be in here in this code, but inside of the console, this is just the environment where we're changing and modifying what's going on with this. So if I refresh this page, yes, they will still be there because they're hard coded into my code pen right here. Like that is that are this the attributes that come with this object, but um, with with this right here, with the way we've modified it with these commands, now it's modified and it doesn't have those attributes. So that's pretty cool, right? So let's go ahead and actually do something else. So um, if we want to see um, the like first, or if we want to see a, like a list of the attributes that are available in our object, we can do this. And this is kind of getting into um, kind of something that is sort of a tangent. This is, uh, but we're gonna do get own property names, All right? And then we're gonna do person object, All right? So we do this, it's gonna show us what we have available. 
So we kind of wanted to like know what was what uh, properties were available and what the names of those properties were inside of that object. We could do that and we could uh, we could see a list of what we need to grab, right? Pretty cool, right? So um, on top of that, that's a lot of stuff to do with um, JavaScript objects. So definitely a pretty comprehensive thing. I uh, definitely would say go to this code pen, check us out. I'll provide a link to that resource. So you can go here and uh, just play around with this object and try some of these things and see what happens. So uh, anyhow, thank you for watching and have a good one. What's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how to write your first function. So inside of this code pen, what I've done is set up a basic HTML frame and then I have put in a script tag. So in the last video, I was writing everything down here in the JS file and logging it in the console, but that's not gonna be what we're doing this time around. We're actually going to push this out to an HTML file. So what I have done here is I've made two variables. So John, and then uh, Honda, right? So employee first name and car brand, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a function that's going to display the employee who sold the car and then the brand of car that they sold with a string of text that says just sold a. So when we return this in this function car sale, when this actually gets put out into the visible space where we can see it, we'll see a John sold a Honda, right? And so I'm just gonna just show you this basic part right here, and then I'm going to work backwards, right? So what if what if we want to change the name of this, right? So if I change this variable to Greg or Steve, you'll quickly see that it changes the name there, right? So if we want to change this to Toyota, right? you can see that regardless of what the values of these variables are, the function's job is essentially just to do whatever is within these two brackets, which in this case is to return these two variables and then this text string, right? So we're essentially just gonna nix all of this, get rid of it entirely, so we don't have anything, right? So I'm gonna show you from the ground up how to do this, right? So I'm still gonna keep our two variables, right? But then we're gonna just type function and then we're gonna type what the function is supposed to be called. In our case, we're gonna call it car sale, right? Then we're going to go ahead and put in this right here, these two parentheses, right? Which can accept parameters, but we don't need to do that right now. We're just gonna go ahead and throw things in the business area, which is inside these curly braces. So. What we're gonna wanna do right this time, just gonna wanna return the result of adding two variables. So in this case, we're gonna type in return, right? Then we're gonna say employee first name plus, and then we're gonna just add a string, right? So I just put text here, sold a. Right, and see I'm adding spaces on the end, the front and the back of this so that we have uh, a sentence structure that makes sense, like if somebody sees it. And then I'm gonna put car brand. Right, and at the end of every line, you're gonna wanna go ahead and throw in a semicolon. Okay, cool, so now we have this. So why are we not seeing anything over here? Great question. Um, well, we haven't done is actually called it to display to any element. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna make it push to this guy right here. This h2, which is just a header to uh, HTML, and we give it an ID, right? So like an identifier, so like your driver's license number will be an identifier, right? So it's kind of a unique value that we can identify in, in our JavaScript so we can say, hey, I want this function to get pushed to here, and this is what you're going to put it in, right? So if we wanna go ahead and throw it in there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do document dot get elements by ID, right? 
we're going to put in this parameter, which in this case is sale, right? And then we're going to do inner HTML. Don't have to worry too much about what this means. Basically, all this means right here is that the document is getting this element by this ID right here. And then inside of it, we're going to put something there. So in this case, we're going to put car sale, right? And then when I save that, we can see that this function is being injected into this header two function right here. So we can see now the same thing that we saw initially, which is the car salesman sold a whatever the brand is, right? And we can even add in an additional uh, variable. So just to add uh, one more thing, right? Car price, variable car price equals, right? 54,000, right? So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna change this function, right? So we added in a variable, but it doesn't say it here yet, right? Because we haven't added it to the function. So we're gonna add to the function, right? So I'm gonna add space four, and then I'm gonna put a dollar sign, right? And then I'm gonna add car price. Nice, right? So we don't have the comma in there, but we can see that Steve sold a Toyota for 54,000 inside this header too, um, because we made those variables and we made a function that added them all, right? What's the function of the, our function? Our function, the function of our function is to add this stuff together. And then this right here calls for it to be displayed inside of sale right up here. So this covers the basic concept of using and displaying functions and kind of what they do. So yeah, this is how they work. So thanks for watching. I hope that this helped you stick around for the next video and check uh, the links for the code pen for all this code. All right, in this video, we're going to go over a super important concept in JavaScript, which is the for loop. Now for loops are pretty simple but looping in general can be a little tricky the for loop to me was the easiest concept to understand um, but let's just get right into it so the first thing you need to do for for loop to describe the basic concept of it is you're going to be going through a list of items essentially and you're going to be going through that and then you're going to be doing something with whatever's in that list, right? So generally what people will do is they'll go through a variable that holds a list of like users, right? Maybe for a website or something like that. And then these users will have information about them. And actually to get this, you know, you can just go to your code pen, but also I found this, I just want to shout out this really cool site called Mockaroo. Uh, if you go there, you can just put in what you want and what the format is that you want. And you just put, if you just put JSON, it'll give you what you need to download. And that'll give you your own data if you want to auto generate all this data. Because none of this is real, this is all dummy data. Um, <coughs> what you do is you have a variable and then you define that list. So this is an array, we know that. It's an array of objects. And then each of those objects has its uh, key value pairs, right? So first name, last name, and an email. And they're all in there. They're all comma separated. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and define a function. We're going to say display first names because the goal of this whole exercise, this whole video, is to display the first names. But we'll go into it a little bit more depth than that. So uh, the for loop, just to start breaking it down, what you got is you just say for, then you do curly braces and then <clears throat> what you do right here this i i is something that's uh, foundational in your for loop but i doesn't have to be i it could be anything but this just means this is the variable that indicates each iteration of your loop so i is commonly used because it stands for like you know iterator right so you, if your iterator equals zero and your iterator is less than the total length of this variable, 
which the length of this variable is each item. So it's one, two, three, four, five, you know, however many long, right? So if it's less than the length, then it's tell it to keep increasing and keep going, right? keep going down the list so this format right here I mean you can look it up I mean I look it up all the time like if I need to like it just slips my mind or something like that um, or if I'm just trying to think of how to structure something new like don't worry about that just look up for loop structure inside and just inside like w3 schools or whatever it is and you can uh, or MDN and use that right so now that we've done this now we set that up then we're gonna say do something here so in this case we've done console log because we're gonna use a console display to display what we're outputting so console log users each iteration of the users variable which is each one of these and then dot first name right so we're gonna ask for the first name of every single thing that we've iterated through. So we could change this to last name, we could change this to email, we could change this to anything in our object. But all we know is that we're going to be getting each iteration of this list because we've defined um, this right here. So I'm going to actually go through a couple different um, parts of this. So, First, let's just break into the for loop because this, is, this will kind of help you understand this a little bit. So if I say if i is less than 2, right, then when I run this, then I'll actually only get the first two names. And we can go up here and we can check Skelly and Frederick, right? Those are the, the first two names that we have in our array. So if I do 3, then I would get three names. And if I got four names, I get four and so on. So also... I can do changes to five, and if I say i is equal to three, right, and then I run this, then I actually get between three and five. So I'm going to get the third name up to the fifth name, or just this, oh, sorry, just the before five, so less than five, right? So the iterator get, is going to work like in that capacity, right? So I'm actually going to try to ditch the list of names. I'm going to move this up a little bit so we just see the function. All right. This is kind of to show you why we put in the users.length and the zero because we want to start from the beginning. And this iterator plus plus just means it's going to keep on looping through. So I hope that that kind of described the uh, like basic like how that, that loop structure is working right there for you. So we can do a lot of things in this middle part right here where we're doing this console log. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to get the, the first name of each. So we're going to display first names in the console. And as you can see, it's giving us all of these first names. But just to change it up and just show you some more email, right? I go in here and then I'm going to get all of their emails, right? So I can also do that with the last name. And then this is now, um, at this point, you know, not what we originally had going on for us. So there's all the last names, because uh, Wilbert, Marchand, Cindy, Basterfield. So those are all matching up, right? So um, and also, what I could do is I could just say users i. Let's just see what that gives us. All right, so that gives us every whole object right so it just goes through and it spits out those objects one after one the other um, as it runs through so this is something that is going to be a foundational uh, concept that you're going to be running into all the time in javascript and a lot of times you'll be doing things like you'll be running through an entire list you'll be looping through a list and then you'll be finding a match and then you will um, then take that match and then push it to an array and then you'll push that put that array in a database or something like that that happens all the time so if you're working with this and uh, you definitely try and master this concept before you get out of here um, 
This code pen will be available in the course resources and hope this is helpful. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Alright guys, so in this video we're going to go over conditional statements or all, you know, commonly known as if then or if then else. So what this does right here is basically if you have a function, there's a condition it checks for. So this one we got a level variable when the level is 4 and like the player level or whatever. And if the level is less than 10, then it says, hey, you are only this, or but if you're above 10, then it'll say, hey, you are above level 10, right? So let's run this right here real quick. So level check, say, hey, you're only level four because we're not above that. But if I take this and I make myself level 12 and I run this, then it will say you are above level 10. And I can even do something Say you are above level 10 and your level is level. All right. Save that, run that. You are above level 10 and your level is 12. Or I can just say, you know, I can just have somebody print the level if it's above that. So you can have this right here in this conditional statement. You can have it um, check like um, multiple different things. Like if level is less than 10, let's say like a seven, and then we can just throw in another variable, like HP equals 50. Um, so it'd be like, and HP is less than 100. Uh, and you are about to die, or I'll just say you are at half health. Or whatever. okay, so let's run that real quick. So if I take this and I say um, if I take it at 100, right? So then it only says you are at level seven. It just leaves this whole portion of the response out and we've checked two conditions. So if thens are really powerful and you can even say something like, hey, if this condition is met, then loop through this variable and check for things and you can have additional you know, conditions inside of that and you can do a lot of really powerful stuff. So this concept right here, very cool. Um, and you can also do like multiple if statements and then your else can just be a nothing right um, but very cool definitely something that you want to master and try just a bunch of different things with and yep that is definitely uh, about all I have on that so you anyhow thanks for watching see you in the next video okay in this video we're gonna break into a concept in JavaScript known as the while loop so the to, to preface this video I'm gonna tell you that I this is like my least favorite part of JavaScript. I don't like while loops. I don't really employ them that much, um, but they are there, and I will tell you what they do. So um, with a while loop, you can take that and you can say while something is something. So I could say equal to ten. Um, level is greater than ten, less than ten, whatever. It's just a condition right here then it will do this block of code and the reason that I don't like while loops I will show you at the end because it will basically kind of break your programming process and you'll you'll understand what I mean when I show you it you can get logged into this thing called the infinite loop and it's where if this condition is true it'll just infinitely do this and it's it's uh, it's rough so, but anyhow we've got this break in here to ensure that that does not happen. So I'm going to show you the first example of this. So my level, let's say my level is four. So while my level is less than ten, I'm going to. It's just going to say you are 
level whatever the level is. Alright, I'm just gonna go ahead and fire that off. Display level. I am level four, right? I am level five, right? Let's see. All I'm just all I'm doing is changing that variable in the condition right there. Cool. Um, another like instance of that is like if I while my level is less than three, so let's say this is like a tier in like a website where you have tiers of membership or whatever. So while I'm lower than level three, it will say, hey, you're not a level three member yet. So this could be like a, um, and you could do this with other um, functions, but there you go. So now it says you are not a level three member yet. But check this out, and this is where um, you have to be careful with while loops and where things can go wrong. So when you're writing code and you're thinking like, hey, maybe I should use a while loop for this. Maybe you should, but also maybe you shouldn't. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. So if I take out this break right here, I see that. I'm actually just gonna copy this code ahead of time. Um, while this condition is true, it's just gonna log that forever. So give it just a second. Oh, that's that weird code pen thing. There you go, so it's just doing this and everything eventually becomes non-responsive <laughs> and eventually your code will just exit out or just stop altogether. So um, beware of the infinite while loop. As you can see, like I can't even, this is just logging just as many as the computer can create. Right? So anyhow, that's a while loop. Um, I hope this was helpful to help you understand that concept and thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, in this uh, video we're going to go over some more um, JavaScript car dealership scenarios. So we have this little code pen here, and what we've got in it is we just have a button that when we click it, it's going to run a function that's going to map the car models, right? I'm just going to show you what it does. When we click it, it shows us the car brand and then how many models it has for each. Right, just to show you, I'll add in Forerunner. Pretty sure that's how you spell the model there. Anyhow, there you go. So we just added to the list, right? Great. So uh, we have a div called list, and it has an ID right here, so that we can insert our data into that HTML. So nothing much going on in the HTML. No styling, so we'll skip over that. Going to the JavaScript, what we have is a array that has it's got objects in it, right? And then those objects have their uh, key value pairs in here, and we have uh, brand, model, and quantity, right? And for the case of this, we did get, didn't get too into the data, but um, moving on down to the functions that we have put in place to show this. So what we needed to do is we needed to get um, the item brand and the item models, right? Because each iteration in this function right here is uh, an item. So each of these is an item. So that's why when we run through it for each item in the array for each object here, which an item and an object are the same thing for this, um, in this case, we put those into a variable after we join them, right? So right here, we actually join them. We put a colon right there to show each brand, and then we show the brands, right? So once we have that variable, we're basically just grabbing that element by that ID and then inserting into it, just inner HTML, what goes inside of that, uh, elements, uh, that element with that ID. Um, and when this case, what we're doing is we're using uh, the higher order function map to actually insert what comes out of this function into there. So this is probably something that you uh, you know can run into that would be a pretty common uh, problem that you might need. So uh, might need to do right. You might need to throw this stuff into a list. So I'm just going to refresh this, and we're just going to play with this a little bit just to show how. Uh, much this thing can vary. So um, what I'm going to do is I could just jump in here. If 
what you want is to see the brand and the quantity. All I would have to do is join those two items. And I can actually go in here and say item models. Right? And this is just to prove to you that we are really pulling from this arrays objects right here and show you the versatility in it. Because once you, you actually make this code, it's like it's a good thing to um, actually see what it does. So then also I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to take out the return statement in this function, right? We'll see. Now it, it does nothing, right? Um, except for output this comma. I think that's a comma. Yeah. All it does is it's just, it just runs, but it, there's nothing there to output. And the reason for that being is that this function has to return a variable that has these two items joined, right? And so let's do another thing too. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to do, we're going to do all, thing, all, all the things. We're going to go and we're going to do um, item models. And I'm going to do item, item dot quantities. And we're going to actually see right here. Oh, quantity. Quantity. T Y. And there it is, right? We have you know, have these brands with these models that have uh, these quantities. And we can we can display this a lot better obviously, but this is just showing you what this is doing. This is running through this array, right? Or uh, this function is running through whatever it's passed and it is spitting this out and returning it so that we can take it and we can insert it into the document. So anyhow, that's how you do that. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. All right, in this video, I'm going to show you a little project that actually helps illustrate some of what we're doing when we're taking a variable and then um, I'll pay, I'll putting it to the DOM. You know, we're actually taking something and then processing that in a JavaScript function. We're clicking on something and then it is giving us an output. So um, this is kind of just a fun little thing I made up. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give them American degrees, a Fahrenheit degree value, and then we're going to hit full send and then it's going to give us the communist translation to celsius which is going to output over here right so i'm going to kind of break down this code real quick so that i can show you all what exactly i did here so we just got a simple html setup which is where our javascript is living in right here and what i have right here is i have a div that holds the input and we have an input that has an id of f so that we can in our JavaScript say hey I want to get F which is this box down here right so we got that input it's one of the things it's a core principle of JavaScript that you're gonna want to remember is just that you can designate what HTML fields are gonna give you what values by IDs uh, and classes right um, the value is blank right here cool and we have um, this button, this or this button right here, and when we fire off this right here, it says on click to Celsius. This is a function right here. So when we click button ID button boy, which is a stupid name for an ID, but anyhow, try to name your give your IDs names that make sense, right? But we'll say this button boy right here. We click it. It's gonna turn it to Celsius, right? And then down here we have uh, all of our other uh, just H2, a div, and H4, right? And then we have an ID, it's a Celsius display. So we have right down here, this is where it's going to come out. So it's going to be inside of this right here. So you just gave, you, you're sorry, inside of this one right here, you give your open and closing tag in HTML, give it an ID and it's gonna pop in right there. So it's gonna pop up in that H4 element right there. Okay, 
So down here we have our script just at the bottom. And we have our function, two Celsius, right? We have no parameters that we're putting into this function right here. We just have our uh, curly braces. And then we make a variable, right? So we say variable f, which is that ID of f, right? We're going to go to that document and we're going to get the element ID of f. And then we're going to get its value. So when you insert into an input, then it's going to give you a value. So you get that value, right? Which will be whatever number we put in there, right? And then that's going to be this variable. So number goes in right now. So the value of f right now will be 30. And then if I change it, it'll be 40, right? So f is kind of a dynamic. Um, but it's not going to be triggered until we fire this off, right? Whenever we click this button, then it's going to say, hey, what is the input of this box currently? And then we're going to hit the document and we're going to get the element by ID, ID Celsius display right here. And then we're going to make its inner HTML equal the formula for Celsius, which is uh, 5 nine times F minus 32 and F, which we, we know what F is because whatever we put in here, um, that's how this is going to work, right? So we declare this variable up here so that below it knows what it is. And let's go ahead and run this. I'll show you how it's got 40. And that is 4 degrees Celsius. So let's see what like 100 degrees Fahrenheit is. Only 37 degrees Celsius, right? And so, yeah, this is just kind of like a fun little way for you to see like how that works and everything. Um, this is just like a simple little just illustration of that concept right there. So, and you're doing this all the time, right? You're, uh, but sometimes you're, you're doing this all the time on the web and most of the time you're inputting into a form, which then when you hit this button right here, it's initiating a function, which is then sending information like a sign up form, sending your information to a database where then it's stored and then it later is rendered onto the, into the DOM. Right, it's going to be visible when you go to like your login page or something like that. So it's a pretty cool concept, and this will help you when you're you're moving forward with JavaScript. And you're actually diving into uh, deeper deeper concepts that involve uh, just putting things to the DOM. So anyhow, I hope that video was this video was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, so we're just going to get started with some JavaScript basics, just to kind of show you how. Um, a couple of different things work. So we're going to start with comments. So in JavaScript, it's valuable for me to put notes inside of code that sh I can leave like little, like, hey, this is what this means, right? So if you put a two forward slashes, that'll give you a single line comment. If you put a forward slash and an asterisk and then close it out with an asterisk and a forward slash, then you can do a multi-line comment. It's kind of just a place to put notes that are non-code because like if I just start typing like anything else like just random stuff like it'll be interpreted as code so you have to put in something to say hey this is not code so that's what a comment does right um, when you're setting up variables there's those are we're gonna, we're gonna kind of see how those work um, here pretty soon in the series but like Here's a number and then like bar name equals John, All right? So this is a number, a string, this is a Boolean, right? So these are three of the common ones you're gonna run into. And I'm actually just gonna show you right here because I didn't put them in. So number, string, Boolean. So this could be true, but it could also be false. So you can, you can write these functions to uh, run off of these um, variables. So like, hey, if logged in is true, then we can display all the content for the user. But if it's false, then we'll just not because they're not logged in. We don't want to show somebody something. Maybe maybe we do, maybe we don't. Um, there's these things called operators. And operators allow you to do, uh, like inside of your conditional statements, you can say like and, or, or not. Um, so like if I said, if 10 is not equal to 9, then say 10 is not equal to 9, right? Cool. So um, 
comment over the data types already. We forgot the object, so an object looks like this. It just says key value pairs inside of curly brackets, right? So this is the format you would set up a an object. Uh, math is pretty straightforward. You're gonna do plus minus asterisk for multiply slash for divide, double asterisk for uh, whatever that does exponential multiplication, and um, yeah forgot this one what is this one yeah that's uh, another one you can do and then increment and minus but I'm gonna show you examples of these things and if you need to figure out what these things are Google is your friend or if you want to figure out how to use them uh, but when you say something you're trying to do out loud it'll generally come to you like oh I need to multiply this or I need to add this or whatever right um, and then here's some of these uh, some more of these assignment operators just uh, reiterated and then the most interesting one of these is a triple equals, which it means like true equals, which means I think it's like the type and the value are the same. So there you go. Um, yeah, so that was super technical, not really, but anyhow, that's just some basic JavaScript stuff that you can um, take away with you that maybe adds a little bit of refinement to uh, this course.